Okay guys, the show is about to start. Um, I'm actually getting the hang of this live stuff. It's acting a little silly still, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, my chat seems to be broken where I can monitor it, but I'm trying to log into YouTube now to try to correct that so I can answer your questions, but give it some time. It's having problems with the server on there right now, it looks like. So, um, let me see what I can do here. My stuff, so I'm going to actually hide this right here. You guys should see now the wall of TVs. It's grown. <laughs> the ones with the blue tape are already done. Slight delay, but it is good to go. I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can try to look. All right, so I should be on camera now. What's going on? This is all live. If you guys can't hear me for whatever reason, feel free to just uh, put something in the chat and I'll figure it out. So this is being broadcast at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Hopefully you guys can see it that way. Um, you know, I'm just experimenting with stuff. So what I'm going to do is I have a few more monitors here. I have this stack right here. Uh, the one on the bottom is really exciting. I'll, I'll, you can't really see it on camera, but um, I'll put it up there. We'll probably save that for last. But that, it's a really old TV. It's a Zenith. And I am looking for a G07. I have a list here. I have G07, K4900, K4600, 20EZ, that's Nintendo, and K7000, which is the most common. So I have all the ohm readings uh, for horizontal and vertical, and all the um, tube types like CR23 or CR31. So we're going to kind of go on this one first. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to take this one down. This one's a Sanyo. So this one, I'm hoping, will be compatible with the 20 EZ. And I think I just caught myself by mistake. That's all right. It's live TV without stuff like that. <laughs> so this one here, let me actually... Um, See if you can see it on the camera there. I might have to move it a little bit. Uh, but this is a Samsung. It's a VCR combo, so it's a little bigger. Um, but what we're going to do is we just flip it forward. And if you guys missed my other video, I had another video that I did where I uh, did a total of, what was it, six TVs? Now this thing is really bleeding here. I actually nicked myself on the, uh, I have a K7025 inch monitor on the floor here that I just got yesterday, and man, this is really bleeding. Hmm. Well, I'll just hold it there for now, whatever. So I just took that one out, we'll put this one here. Hopefully I, I can see, yeah, I'm looking now. Looks like it's good. So you can get, you know, stuff for free. I got these, all, all these TVs I got, I didn't pay anything for. I think I might have paid for my other tube swap that I did, where I did a K7000 drop and replacement. I didn't have any TVs at that time. And I think I might have paid 20 bucks for it, maybe even 10, I'm not sure. But uh, there's a guy, Lewis, on the Facebook uh, you know, forums and stuff, who contacted me and said, hey, I have a bunch of TVs. He gave me eight of them, actually. I recycled two of them because they weren't compatible. And then when I went there yesterday to help him out with his asteroids, he gave me this other one. He said, hey, this is a 19 as well. So we're going to check it out. So typically I discharge it. Just be careful. It's my disclaimer here. Always discharge a monitor before you use it. These I know for a fact hadn't been used in a long time, so I'm not really too worried. If you are worried, just do the proper thing to discharge it. I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but, um, you know, it is at your own risk, of course. So um, usually when you're touching stuff like the ohms on the um, yoke, it's not going to have any effect. You just don't want to touch the anode cup or the flyback. So we should be good regardless. So I'm just going to set my meter. We're going to take a record here. I was going to do this 
you know, I'm kind of like cleaning out down here and I said, you know what, let me just go live, why not? You guys can kind of hang out with me a little bit. So, I'm gonna go to the ohm setting and then this one, let me look here, it is, uh, looks like the blue is here and the red is right here. And that one looks like it's 2.5. So let me just write this down here, 2.5 horizontal, and then vertical is going to be something else. And this one is a, uh, looks like it's a Samsung tube, and I usually write the tube number, which is A48, which is a good sign. Usually that's what you want, KRD82X. And this one is... Looks like it's a CR31. CR31. I can just tell by looking at it. But if you don't know, you can just whip out your cell phone. And I'm going to go to tubular lookup. It's tubular.atomized.org. You'll see it in my last video too. I could always add it to the description here. But I'm just going to type it in. So A48 KRD KRD. 82x so it says here it's uh, heater 6.3 volts g1 is 50 volts that's if you want to rejuvenate and stuff but the neck is cr23 so i was wrong by looking at this so this is a cr23 which is the older type so i'm going to go up to the camera real quick just to show you guys that's how it looks so i put in the tube number oh there's actually a glare and uh let me see if i can there we go, it says CR23, so that's what you want to do, you want, want to always check that. So I'm going to write down, I wrote down CR31, so I'm going to change that. And that's it, so now I'm just going to write it down on here, just for myself. So horizontal and vertical, horizontal is the red and the blue and vertical is the yellow and the green. And again, I go into detail on this on my other video. You can click up above, I'll probably add the annotation later where you can click on that and I tell you all about that and how to measure it and what to set the multimeter to. But again, this is just a quick live video because I gotta get some work done today. So, now that I did that, and I'm gonna put CR23. And I'm going to write A48 uh, KRD 82X. And I think it's Samsung. Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and measure it. So I'm just going to go on the red and the blue, which is, I'm looking at it here. See the top ones right here. I'm just gonna read off what it says here. So this one says 2.6. So I'm just gonna write down, it said 2.5 earlier. So 2.5, 2.6 is fine. And now the yellow and the green, it's usually a higher value here. And this is a 14.1. 14.1. So I'm looking at my list here. Um, I wrote a list, basically Geo 7. Um, here, I'll just kind of put it up on here. You guys can see that. But I have the Geo 7 at uh, horizontal is 2.2, and then you know the values, and then all that stuff there. So Geo 7s are the hardest to find because the verticals are really high. It's uh, 52.8, and that's really kind of like a unicorn, or unobtainium, like people like to say. So this one, um, K7000 is more common, 3.4, and you could go up to 15 max, I think, on that, and that's a CR31. But this is a CR23 at that same value or similar. So, um, hmm, something I don't have. So there's also, it's kind of rare, I've never seen them, but they have K7000 thick neck ones that are like these here, they're not as skinny. So this is one I may keep. So, all right. 
So I guess we know what it is. I'm going to go ahead and close this up and we'll go to the next one. Pretty easy to do. You know, unfortunately, when you're getting these, you can't do what I'm doing. Like if you're at a thrift store, usually they don't let you. <laughs> but, um, you know, you want to definitely open them up to see if they're compatible. But if you're at the thrift store, just look at the model number. The model number on this one, let's see here. It's uh, CXD1934. And this label's falling off, so I'm going to quickly pop some tape on there. I don't want it to go anywhere. I don't think I really closed it too well. It doesn't look like it's snapping in. Yeah, it's not really going in right. Let me redo that. So let me know if you guys are liking the content lately because uh, you know, I've been trying to find cool stuff to do. Giveaways, that kind of thing. Um, and it was really good, that giveaway that we did last time. The guy actually did contact me, his name was Dylan, and um, he was super happy that he won it. Um, and of course, <laughs> I'll say it because you won't know where he lives, but uh, he does live in Alaska. So we were hoping continental US, so you know, it's like the most expensive place to, to ship in the US. It's pretty, it made me laugh a little bit. Uh, so sorry, uh, Aaron, Aaron's going to ship it out to him, but I am going to send him a shirt. I'll probably have it sent directly to him from those guys over there. Um, you know, the t-shirt place. But uh, yeah. All right, so we got this one. I'm gonna flip it over. And then I'm gonna take the tape that I wrote it on. Did I finish writing it? I don't think I wrote it. So 2.5 and 14. Take that, slap it right here, and we'll put it away. Cool, so let's move this to the side. And let's do this next one here. This is going to be the Sanyo. I got this a long time ago when I didn't really know anything. And I assumed like, hey, it's a Sanyo brand. It's going to fit perfectly in the Sanyo, Sanyo uh, 20EZ. <laughs> But everybody knows it's not the case. There's different manufacturers inside. But this one is a Sanyo and uh, the model number, I'm going to flip it over now. It's going to be uh, AVM as in Mary 1906. So it has 19 in it, so it's definitely a 19 inch. Uh, this one has the bits that are different. So let me put that there. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. This will fit. Yep. That's already a good sign in my opinion. But it doesn't have the standard US uh, you know, screws that you see on all the TVs. And this looks like it has two over here, so there's one right there too. We'll figure it out. This TV I've had for years. I just never got to it. Um, let's see. One, two, three. There's this one. All right, let's see if it comes off. Yeah, this is off with the whole one. I want to actually take this one out. 
Hey guys, hey, somebody's in the chat. It's working now. <laughs> Your wife would kill you for hoardboard CRTs. <laughs> yeah, they are going to be gone in a few years. This is why I'm doing it, you know. Um, tell you what, the way I convinced the wife is um, I had one. I had like a shelf with three or four. I ended up getting rid of them. And then I had to get one for my Smash TV machine. Uh, I have the 19 inch one over there. And um, I paid 140 bucks for an arcade monitor with, you know, burn free tube from a guy. And then when she saw that, she said, what the heck, you're spending $140 on this thing. I said, well, you know, they don't make them anymore. So I have to get them through that. And ever since then, she's been okay with me hoarding them. So, um, you know, I don't like it because it's taken up a lot of room in my arcade, but like I said, they're probably going to be gone. I'm going to do these slots pretty quickly, probably by the end of the summer. And I have a lot of stuff on my machines that have actual monitors that I can, that are all burned in, that these are probably going to get swapped with. Because I do have two 4600s, and I have one, two 4600 tubes. This is a K7000. It's always useful. I think I have a K7000 laying around somewhere. I think it's actually, I do. It's in my Arkanoid, which is going to become my Zookeeper. And this one here is also a K7000. That's a 4900 down there. So this one's going to go into Rolling Thunder. So they're kind of all assigned. So this will eventually go away by the end of the summer. I'm looking for a G07 just to have it because they're so rare. Just, you know, something for me. I don't have, I do have a G07 in the Turbo Outrun, but it doesn't really, it's not really that bad to burn in. And I do have another one actually that has Super Pac-Man burn in that's really bad underneath the stairs in storage. So if I could find a swap out for that, that would be really cool. But this one, wow, it's really dirty. Uh, let's get that tube number first. Let me uh, <clears throat> write it down. Where's my pen? Here it is. So this one, let's see. I don't really have a brand name on here. Hmm. That's odd. It's kind of uh, missing the brand name. No frills. You guys remember that? You have to go to Pathmark. If you're if you live in New York and know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, so it's uh, A48, which is good. Double A. B3. 7X. By the way, if you guys are local, um, you know, feel free. I can give you some tubes if I don't use them. You know, I live near the New York City area. Tri-State. That was a good city. I just didn't want to take this off over here. Um, and let me type this in. So I'm going into my application again. And I'm going to go back. So A48. And then KRD. No, sorry, that's the wrong one. AA. B as in boy. 37X. Okay, this one's a CR23. And it's still 6.3 volts at 50 volts. Okay, so that's good. So horizontal on this one and the vertical. And let's go ahead and test that now. By the way, I put a new, if you guys are looking for multimeters, I have to buy a new one. This is my good one, but I have my spare one kind of went on the fritz a little bit, so I'm gonna replace it. Uh, but there's another good brand. It's only, I think it's under 20 bucks and it has a little area where you can test uh, transistors and diodes and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So I might pick one up um, or maybe I'll do a giveaway. We'll see. For 20 bucks I might do that. I love doing giveaways. I like making people happy. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like this is red over here and it's on top. Hmm, this one's a little more of a pain to get to. It's probably covered. Yeah, that's what it is. It has like this little cover, which I'm actually gonna take right off. So you got the, these two. So this is for vertical. No, sorry, this is horizontal. 4.1, wow. 4.1. Thirteen 
0.7. So according to my list here, um, anything that comes close to that is a K7000 again, but this is a CR23 CR tube. The 20EZ, unfortunately, it's 2.2 horizontal. This one's 4.1. I don't think that'll work. And then vertical is 28.1. And on this one, it's only 13.7. So this is not a 20EZ compatible tube. <laughs> but, you know, I'll save it for a little bit. And then by the end of the summer, I could always just recycle it. So I'm going to take this. I'll write it on here. Uh, we got horizontal. Vertical 4.1, 13.7, and then the tube is going to be A48, AA, B37, X, and that's a CR23. All right. So I do this because, again, you don't want to have to open this up again to figure it out. So, by the way, if the, yom, the ohms um, aren't compatible like the yokes, you can remove the whole thing and put the original one on here as long as the pinout is the same. Uh, you just have to go through the trouble of reconverging it. But a lot of people take the purity rings off of this one, which is already set for the tube, to the other one. They just take the, the real important part is the, the yoke right there. So yeah, something to think about. All right, is that in there? It's still not in there. Sometimes it takes a couple tries getting this thing in there. Um, there we go. So so far, got the no Geo Sevens yet, no Sanyos yet. Those are the two. Uh, Rail of soup slops, I guess. I'm just trying to get this in there, it's not going in. Come on. I'll do that one after then. So we get this one right here. Let's see what else you guys are saying. 80s tech and reselling is saying, LOL, my wife just walked in when you answered that. She assured me she wouldn't kill me. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be careful. If you have um, young kids, you don't want to have this stuff around them. Um, if it's closed, it's fine. It's a TV. Show. But if you have stuff like you can see in the background here, this is a K4600. You don't want this out there because, God forbid, they start touching things and it's not discharged. You don't want them getting shocked or killed. So, you know, I have mine pretty high up or up on the machine so she can't, you know, my daughter is three. She can't mess with it at all. But with this, you know, you store them. You want to store them. You definitely want to store them with the covers on so it doesn't get necked or anything like that. I might think twice about saving. Is it this one? The other one with the VCR, because that's pretty big with the VCR. I mean, it's a 19-inch VCR. I could use it. The thing is, I have over there, I have a 13-inch. Um, it's really nice, too. It's a 13-inch. Uh, I think it's the brand is Symphonic, but um, it has a VCR built in. And my daughter will watch, like, Aladdin on there, because I still have the old VHS tapes from that. Or the old Ninja Turtle episodes on VHS. She's starting to like those, too. So yeah, I already have a VCR. I don't know if I need a 19 inch, but never know. All right, so this one is here. Let me go ahead and pop this on there. I really want to do a video um, back on Rolling Thunder because played it the other day again and got to the last boss and died. <laughs> I'm almost beating that game, almost. So my goal is to do it in one quarter. It's really hard that game. Alright, so I'll just throw this right here. And by the way guys, stick around towards the end because I'm going to kind of show you this. This is the bar top that I'm building. Um, it's a uh, Taito profile, so it kind of looks like a kicks cab. But it's going to be a shoot-em-up cab that I'm making and um, I'm starting to assemble it now. It's a two-player cabinet. 
It's pretty cool looking. And this is the control panel where it's going to have the Sanwa buttons and it's going to have LS32 joysticks which have been routed out. It's going to be a really cool build. So I'm working on that now. I'm starting to put everything together and then I'll do a video on that. That I'm not going to do live. I'm going to do that probably um, a whole video on that, you know, where I edit it and stuff. And I forgot the cover, but I don't care. I'm not going to throw it out <laughs> for that TV. All right, so this one is looking the most promising to me because it's so old. Check this out. Ugh, it's pretty heavy too. Check this out. This is a Zenith Space Command. That's what it's called. And I'm looking on the back here. It's, uh, hmm. oh, model number is S as in Sam, A1923W. So this is a 19 inch. It was given to me with that pile of TVs from, from uh, no, actually it wasn't. I actually went from Lewis, I had a 20 inch, and I went to the recycle center to return it. And then this one was here, and when I checked the model number, it had 19 in it. So I said, let me give it a try. We'll see what it does. We'll look at the tube number to tell us, and we'll see what the homage is on this. But it's really old. So could be compatible. It's cool. Back in the day, they had picture, black level, sharpness, color level, and tint. Really cool stuff you can get to. Let me check the chat once more. Looks like, uh, can't pronounce it, is it Fraspy? It says, hi bud, have you been working on Hanthrax chassis is like the NTC 900? Um, Hanthrax Polo, that's like the 25 inch ones, right? Um, I have not, I know there's cap kits on it, can't be any different than any other one, but I don't, I'm not, I usually do West Wells Gardener. Uh, I haven't done Sanyo yet, which I'll get to. Um, and I have done the Electro Home, which is the G07. And I have done the U5000 as well, which I have one right here on the side, ready to get capped, along with my K7000 25 inch. But yeah, those are a bit harder to do. Um, I know for 25 inch monitors, it's easier to swap, they're more common. So I don't know if that makes any difference. All right, so this TV is a little bigger than the other one, so I may go sideways on this. To prevent it from touching the table. And this one also has the same, doesn't have the uh, typical Phillips, it has the driver and it fits fine. This has probably never been turned on since the 80s, this TV. <laughs> it looks pretty old, but you never know. People will turn it on to try to test it. And just because it's broken doesn't mean you can't use it for tube swap because the tube is fine, but usually the chassis is the part that's broken. So it's like it's here. So I might I might discharge this one just to be safe. I'm not really sure. I think we'll be fine. Let's see what else is going on in the chat. Not nothing much. You can see it there. It's actually it's great that it's working. It wasn't working before, but um I'm glad that it's on the uh, on the video itself because sometimes if I edit it and I chop off the ends, it kills the chat. But if it's on the video itself, it doesn't do that. So that's why I put that there. Super chat is also open. I know you guys like to do that as well, where your chat stays up. You donate towards the channel, and it'll display like this little graphic that animates. Um, the cord on this one is cut off. Somebody looks like they cut it off. So maybe there's something wrong with it. this right here. So, there we go. I notice a lot of TVs have that where that's connected there. All right, <clears throat> check this out. This is more of a, yeah, I just dropped the screws everywhere. This is more of a deluxe version. You can see the tube itself is right here and the rest is all electronics and all this equipment to change it and change the, uh, there's like ribbon cables, computer board. Um, let's see, so, wow, super dusty, I might discharge this, I don't, you know what,
know what? I don't think I need to. I keep saying that, but it looks like the stuff is right here. It's plugged in here. And let me walk around this mess that I just put on the floor. Walk it over. Wow, it's super dirty. And looks like it's up here. I have to do the same thing and take that thing off. Right there, just like a cover, just like on the other one. I wonder if I can grab these pliers. It's just so dirty. It's crazy. See, I'm moving the yoke because <laughs> this thing won't come off. That sucks. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, it's just that it's loose, is what it is. Hmm. How do I get in that? Well, I could always take these wires. I mean, there's one right here, and then the other pair goes to here, right there, two, two, that goes to the neck board though, I'm actually looking for these two, there's one down there, one, two, there's four of them, okay so there's one that goes here and one that goes all the way down there which I can't get to, so I'm going to try to pull it out, Going underneath here, I should be able to grab it. I'm just pulling off the chassis. There we go. All right. So these are not color coded. So uh, that's why I did that continuity test that I showed you in the last video. If you want to click on it, feel free. Let me just clean my hands. Looks like it stopped bleeding here, so we'll see how it goes with that. All right, <clears throat> let me get my multimeter. Let's see if it knocks this out of the park. How did I learn about CRTs? Um, trial and error without killing myself, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. You watch videos like uh, John's Arcade. He has a really good uh, series where he works on recapping monitors and he shows you how to discharge it and. Um, I'm actually wearing the retro shirt that I used to have um, for BYOAC. It stands for Build Your Own Arcade Controls, and it has like the stuff on the back you can see. Um, this actually was a group that I joined where you build your own arcades, and people were using CRT TVs from like uh, monitors and decasing them, and you know you find out how to discharge them, how to be careful about them. That grew into using people started using TVs to plug in S video inputs, you know, for main machines, and then. Over time, you know, you got to recap a monitor if you're in this hobby, so um, that's what I did. And then you just learn it over time and, you know, experience. You know, I didn't go to school for this or anything, so, you know, I'm actually testing this one on this one, see if it comes up. Yeah, this looks like it's a horizontal. That's exactly at 3.0. So horizontal. If I can do it, by the, by the way, guys, anyone can do it. So you just gotta try stuff, watch videos like this. This is why I make these videos, to show people that you can do it yourself. I use normal tools, nothing special. Um, the rejuvenator that I have to rejuvenate monitors, you know, I learned that through watching videos and actually seeing it in person. Um, and then I just bought one, they're within reach. Mine was only 60 bucks for my machine. So, you know, it's not that expensive to get in this hobby and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna test this one now here too. I might have to hold it like this. There we go. I was hoping that, that this one's really high, but it's turning out it's only 17.1. So 17.1 and horizontal's 3.0. So what does that match? Not really anything. K7000 again. Well, no, K7000 said the match should be 15. This one's 17.1. I don't see anything that matches. Um, nope. So I might have to bring this back. Or, you know, I already removed the yoke. You saw it moving here. Like that. You take this off. 
slide it off and put the other one on. And we gotta find out what type of uh, connector that is by typing it into my phone here. Um, let's see. Where are we looking now? Oh, this is a Zenith. And you might hear my daughter screaming upstairs. Wow, this is a weird tube number. This is type number, serial number, and then the tube number is CA48. So I don't think that's anything I've ever seen. Usually it's A48s, but we'll try. Let's see, CA48. Oh, that didn't come up. So, I would say, I don't know, I'll keep this around for a bit. If you guys want to put in the comments or something what you think it is, but let me write it down. Looks like it's, uh, ooh, I'm bleeding again. Crap. <laughs> I'll just keep that just on there. It's funny, I did that right at the beginning of the video. Hey, Sean Henderson. It says ZZZTS, what does that mean? So this is a Zenith here. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I see. There's a serial number, ZCR, but that's not it. And then, yeah, there's nothing else on here. Made in the USA, picture to EIA1101, whatever that means. CA 48A CA 48A CB 0 2X It could be O 2X I think it's 0, yeah, it's 0 Enter. So horizontal and vertical and I gotta measure that again because I forgot what it was Easy on this one, not too bad Use the vertical right now So this is something I have to do. I've been wanting to do this for like a week. And why aren't you doing anything? It's hmm. weird. I already want to throw this one out. Yeah. Oh, I see. I wasn't touching the metal. One, two, seventeen point two. So that's vertical. And then I'm assuming this is a CR23. It looks like the fatter one. Um, and horizontal. All right, so I'll write it on here now. So I'll put uh, horizontal, vertical. Horizontal is 3.1, 17.2 for vertical, CR23, and then tube, CA48, ACB, 02x zenith. All right. All right. This is a big one to store. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I keep it? Should I chuck it? I really was convinced that this older one would be, because older TVs are really more compatible with the older Geo7s and stuff. The ones with the CR23s are older for sure. But that one didn't really pan out. Like I thought it would. You know what, um, I think that's 19 inch. It has to be 19 based on the serial, I mean the model number. The model number is SA1923W. So I'm 
pretty sure it's a 19. I think the 20s come out later. Most 20 inches are, you know, just later models. So I'm pretty sure this is a 19. It just looks bigger because it has all this extra like crap on the right where you can adjust everything. It's more of a deluxe model. So. Looks like someone else took it apart because there's a couple screws missing and it got cut. So, yeah. So, this one is going to be on no go. I know I dropped some screws too where I can add myself, but it is closed. It's fine. I think I'll be good to go. Next one there. Nope. All right. So, that's the last one that I'm doing here. I'm going to put it down over here because I want to show you guys some of the bar top again if you guys missed it. And you guys have seen this one, right? This is a Ms. Pack bar top. I have a video on this too. So if you guys want to see that, uh, it's really, really cool. We play it all the time. Um, it's a 60 in one in there. It's JAMA, so you can pop any JAMA board if you want in there. But for now, I just have the 60 in one. Um, I might get rid of this. I had a Nintendo one before that looked like a Donkey Kong. Gave that to a relative and then got this one and then this one may go and get replaced by the one I'm about to build. But for now, this one's really nice. Maybe I'll have it, um, you know, I mean, if it goes to people I know, I could always use it again. So we'll see. I don't know what I want to do. I'm going to bring that probably to the Retro World Expo this year in Connecticut. So that one's definitely going to go. And hopefully this one will be done by then. But this is going to be another bar top that I'm working on. You can see I'm lifting it up here. Really cool Taito type design. Um, I already started putting stuff in. I haven't glued it in. I did like a dry fit. But when this one goes together, it's going to be huge. Here, let me see if I can try to get both working here. Just to give you a little preview. So if I were to put it like this, right? And here, I don't know if you can see that. No, you probably can't. But yeah, it's going to be, here's the control panel, right? Look how wide that thing is compared to me. It's going to be two players. It'll be all the way down here, like that. Actually turn it this way, but still, it's going to be pretty big. Wow, it's still not wide enough. Yeah, so it's going to be that big. That wide. Yeah, nice big machine. It's going to be fun to build. I'm probably going to get to it either later today or tomorrow. Probably later today. I don't know if I'll have time tomorrow. You know, um, this will take a lot of noise to do because I'll be banging stuff in to put everything together and then I'll be also be using my um, I have a compressor with a um, nail gun and I'll be using the staples on that and putting dowels so that'll be a little loud I might want to do that today because if other time I can work on it would be at night when my daughter's sleeping and there's no way <laughs> it's just too loud for her, even though I'm in the basement so I guess that's it um, if you guys had any other questions I just wanted to do it I figured why not we can do it together so the verdict is, the first one was 2.5 horizontal, that was a Samsung, and 42.1 uh, vertical. The next one was, um, I think it was, which one was that? It was a Samsung. Yeah, the second one was the one over there with the VCR. I want to see the brand on that real quick. Yeah, that was uh, the Sanyo that I had for years. That was 4.1, and vertical was uh, 13.7 and then the last one was uh, horizontal 3.1 and vertical 17.2 and they were all Sierra 23s but none of them were a G07 I was hoping for that or a Sanyo compatible uh, tube so I have a decision to make you know now that I have all this that by the way I forgot to put this on this is the one that goes on that last one um, so out of all of them since I have them all labeled you know I'm gonna stack them now real quick that one's there, and then this one right here goes right here, and then I'm definitely going to get rid of some. If you guys need any, if you have any things that are local, uh, I'll give some to you. You know, I'll probably keep the 4600s because I have a use for those and one of the K7000s, but I do have a spare K7000. Um, 
It looks like these are top of over, but they're pretty sturdy. It's just the one, the one underneath is a little mushy, but it's fine. They're not going anywhere. It's like a inside joke John's table, right, on his channel? <laughs> yeah, John and I hung out actually last week at Jay's. It was pretty cool. Go check out his channel. He did a uh, Black Knight 2000 remake uh, video. It was really cool. So I was in that video too, um, just briefly. So that's it. So this is it. If you want to check it out, you can just uh, go to my other video on how to use it. Really simple to do. First thing I want to do again was the model number in the back. And then, of course, once you get them home, you know, use this. For me, it's a little easier. I know some people get charged to bring these back to recycle. They'll pay like $5 a set or something. But luckily for me, they don't charge you. They take it back free because there's a third-party company that actually pays them to take them. So they recycle them. So, yeah, so... This is probably the most you'll ever see in my house. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, I could take a whole inventory. Nine, 10, 11. I'm trying to check out how many tubes I have in my house. There's 11, then I have 12, 13, 14, 15, which you can't see. 16, 17 here in the cabaret. 18, that's my 27 inch. 19, I have a vector monitor here. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there's 30 so far, and then I have two on the floor. 31, 32. And then, I don't know if you want me to count my CRT uh, VGA monitors. I have two 21 inches over there, so that'd be 34. And then I have another 13 inch on top for two swap. Uh, that's 35, and then I think I have two 19s. So 37, I have 37 TVs in my house. <laughs> Definitely gotta get rid of some. Uh, but I do have storage, I have shelving where you can't see it, but it's in the other room outside the arcade. And um, it's not bothering anyone there, so that's why I keep them there. But this wall here has got to go because you can't see my PVM monitors, which you see here. You can't see my cabaret, which I gotta work on. I wanna put a Tetris in that. And they're kind of blocking my main arcade over there, which my son likes to play. I have to kind of move stuff out when he comes over. Um, and that's a 27 inch arcade monitor. It's a Betson. It's a multi-sync. That one, that was probably the most expensive one here. It's 500 bucks for that monitor. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Obsessed? Maybe. I don't know. It's a hobby. Definitely not hoarding because, you know, you're getting rid of parts. It's not like I want to keep them and I don't want to destroy them. If they don't work, boom, out they go. So. I'm going to compare these other ones. I'll kind of make a decision. Um, I have friends that need them too. So even though they're not compatible, they can still swap the yolks. So I'm going to give them away to them. Uh, but I know people that are hurting for these where you can't find them anywhere. So I've been really fortunate and lucky with this haul where I was able to get it. And then I have um, 25 inches on the bottom here. I could show you that if you want. I'll do that really quickly. Just excuse the mess, like I said, because there's stuff everywhere for TVs. You see those right there? Those are, uh, there's cap kits on top of them. Those are two 25s I got yesterday. I actually have a third one um, that didn't fit in my car that I'm going to grab later. Uh, there was a guy, uh, Drew, was it Drew? I can't remember who gave it to me. Um, oh, it was Brandon on the uh, Facebook forum. So yeah, he had stuff in his storage. He just handed them to me. Um, he doesn't know if they work. They probably don't. Um, I'm going to recap them, but I'll give them a shot and I'll try to repair them because I'm really good at raster monitors now. And then over here... It's hard to see. I'll kind of scroll over. Oof, I almost fell there. But that's, um, it's actually not mine. That's from an Asteroids. I'm going to try to repair that. It's the first time really delving into, um, actually my second time delving into vector monitors. I've done a 6100 uh, for a Tempest before and it came out great. We bulletproofed that thing. But this one is for my buddy Lewis who, it was just easier to take everything because I got to get new transistors and, uh, you know, the whole rebuild kit for that thing. Because his Asteroids right now is playing blind. So there it is. So, yeah, guys, let me go back over here. I have all these cords everywhere. Live TV, you gotta love it. <laughs> let me just reposition it. I think that is good right there. Okay, great. Oops, sorry. Let me change it here. Great, so if you guys wanna subscribe, go ahead. I'm gonna kinda click on my stuff over here to do. So I have the YouTube subscription thing, you can see it 
come in right there. Please subscribe. Um, we have over 3,000 subscribers now, which is awesome. I had a giveaway for that. You can check out the last video I did on that. Um, also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of stuff on there, little pics here and there of what I'm working on. So if you're not following me or don't have an account, I would suggest you do that. It's really fun. And of course, Instagram, I'm a little new to that, but um, I don't post as much on there, but I do post um, stuff sometimes uh, with Twitter and Instagram, you know, just in case. So. so that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah, Lee, um, I'm just answering a question here. Um, yeah, I'm friends with John. Um, he lives in the New, New England area, which I'm from Connecticut here. I'm originally from New York City. He's in Massachusetts, which is right above Connecticut. And then Jay is over on Rhode Island, which is right next to it. So um, we all kind of get together every now and then. Last time I went to John's house, I think it was, well, I want to say over five years ago. He had a barbecue. I went over for the first time, met him in person, even though I talked to him online. And then from then on, you know, we've talked. And then um, I saw him last week when I went to Jay's house for the Arcade Wednesday repair stuff that we do there. Yep. There's a lot of cool people around here. I know a few YouTubers, actually. Um... You know, same thing, that's how I met Richie from Richie Knuckles. Um, he's about an hour from me, so that's actually a lot closer. He's closer to me than John is. So I want to do some stuff with him. I already talked to him. He has a lot of uh, hidden gems in his warehouse and his trailer. So I told him, I said, I got to do a walkthrough with you to uh, find that out, find out what you got. Yeah. Cool, so this is just a quick video. You know, I usually release everything on Friday, Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, this is just kind of like a bonus video. Um, I might do a live somewhere in the week sometime, maybe at night, um, for some games. Maybe I'll play OutRun. I can kind of consistently now get to the end on OutRun. And I did add a subwoofer, so I want to start playing that more. It's a lot more fun to me now <laughs> with the music and all that. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to put up my end page here. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said. Um, you can see there I have the Twitter. I have the Facebook page if you want to do that too. I usually don't mention that, but I have a group on Facebook. Uh, it's it's uh, facebook.com slash group slash Dell's Arcade. And you can go there and uh, check it out. And you can see right up on the left, that's Richie Knuckles and his daughter. So when I went to that tour, you can check that out as well. There's links to do that. But yeah, I guess I'll sign off. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.